Mr. Boom, good morning. Good to see you. Thanks, sir. Uh, you look bright and early. You're not as spent as some of your colleagues. It's only been some time, and uh, it's good to be back on uh, Sunrise and uh, to channel all channelable items. Thank you. So, uh, at the moment, well, the projections have been made by different people, uh, but looking through the speech, the way the voting may have gone, what are your expectations? I imagine that it's going to be a, uh, too close to call. Too close to call? It's too close to call. Amongst Bet when who? Between uh, the candidates, really, because uh, a lot of uh, swings are going to take place. There are those... Uh, here, you don't have unattached voters. Hmm. There are those you call uh, neutrals. There are no neutrals here. Almost every delegate here has an owner. Mm. An owner? Yes. Almost in Nigeria, we have voters or delegates and delegate owners. Were you a delegate? I was not a delegate. I'm a, a statutory delegate who was excluded by the law. So at the time you were, yeah. well, you, you had an owner? No, no, I will own. Oh, you will own Yeah, because delegates. I'm a statutory delegate. Therefore, I'm a leader, an opinion leader, a leader of the party in a particular area. Just for curiosity, what does it take to own delegates? First, you are electing, before today, you are electing a delegate. So if you can vote for a person to be nominated and then voted for as a delegate, it presupposes that he respects your opinion about who to vote for. Mm. Now, you might call that guided democracy. When people pretend that democracy is about choice and all that, there are no choices that are not guided. There are no choices on earth, whether in America or in Britain whether in Germany or anywhere, that are not guided by opinion, but, shaped by information available to whoever is going to vote. But this kind of vote? guidance yes. is not guidance in the true sense of the word. That kind of guidance here means that once you are quote-unquote guided, you are expected to comply and not unguide yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> Please, get this straight. These are mature voters who are convinced, first of all, that this person qualifies to be my leader and therefore I will respect his opinion. Anytime he no longer feels comfortable with that, that's why you see migration. You see a master in one party and see those you suppose are followers in another party. I have seen that happen several times in different places. I'll give you names, big names, and you'll be shocked at. In the next elections in 2023, you're going to get masters against servants, followers against full soldiers. You're going to see that happen in most of the states. Mm -hmm. Governorship elections, parliamentary elections, and all that, across the country. So for this, when you say you expect it to be a close call, why and between who and who? Now, look at uh, the stepping downs, the epidemic of step downs that you got this last night. Mm -hmm. It became an epidemic when you discovered that those who should be frontline runners suddenly became followers and uh, the campus and were stepping down and stumbling down at some for some of them they were stumbling down and if that happens the psyche of the average voter that is why i was telling you that when you say you are guiding an average voter at this level who is a delegate will have to make his, himself available to the opinion that he finds on the floor for instance you find five aspirants, not ordinary aspirants, former governors, sitting senate, uh, ministers, sitting senators, saying I step down for this. I mean, somebody who pulled out a hundred million to buy a form, saying I am stepping down at no cost. Whatever hostility may have taken place outside of that audio is irrelevant. What you are seeing in front of you is that this big man is stepping down for another man you feel is his equal contemporaries and this is stepping down so what it uh, how it affects the voter or the delegate is instantaneous is spontaneous it is almost involuntary and the man is going out there to go and say if if these big men have done so it means their supporters are going to go that way so why do i waste my vote on the person I but to be? why is that the case because i mean is there a way that they will know that a certain delegate did not vote in the way he was guided to be voted they have no way to know that is why it's a secret ballot that is why it is deliberately made secret ballot. It's not so, not to victimize and induce unnecessary and influence voters or sometimes even cajole or force them. So how come politicians have implicit confidence that how once politicians or delegates have been guided, they will remain guided? Because over time, 
over time you have had to deal with these characters, but at all times you must keep a margin of error so that you absorb the shock, the political shock of a voter or a delegate changing his mind. So if you have 10 delegates that you think are going to vote your way, you should always keep a margin of two or three. Seven is a pass mark. It's an A anywhere. So if you keep that, you must always keep that margin. So who will be the close the runners here? Say again. Who will be the close runners? The close runners in this context, like I said, I sure do stay on top there because of what happened, because of the quality of people that stepped down for him. Naturally, we expect people to do that. I'm saying this as an independent observer, as, an, as a political actor who has sat As here. a delegate owner. As a former <laughs> delegate owner, I no longer own delegates. You no longer own delegates? <laughs> yes, because I didn't participate in this one. I was knocked off. And you will find that a, uh, a man like the vice president, uh, people like uh, uh, Yaya Bello, people like, who had age and who had good media outing and good contact on ground. If you have people like Akwabio who had had to step down, then you would definitely know that you are in for a close run between those who didn't step down. 14 of them didn't step down. Mm -hmm. Professor Ben Ayade of Pacific State first did not step down after the, the mm -hmm. plea. And then you have people like um, uh, people like uh, uh, Rotina Meche, people like the Vice President, Yemo Shibanjo, there are people like, uh, like I said, Yaya Bilo. Those people are going to come in shopping for votes where votes were not expected to be got. So, for some of those who stepped down, for instance, uh, Senator Aquabio, yes. you know, in his state, you also had uh, Senator Aquabio there, who left the APC and went on to the NMPP because he wanted the president, the governorship ticket. So he's a candidate. He's going to seek that ticket for a quiet bomb says on the platform of NMPP because APC will not give him that. So he has some leverage and some delegates. So to what extent can we say Akwabio has got delegates? Oh, um, we'll come to that in a moment. But the images we see here now, uh, you understand this process. This, the sorting which is about to begin. So haven't seen some of this happen. Could you tell us what's playing out here? Well, uh, they are moving in there to do sorting and subsequent counting. Those are ballot papers you can see them being carried up to show that nothing is going to happen to them under transparency at its best for APC. The organizers of this program, after the last convention, have shown that they, they are improving marvelously in geometrical and astronomical order. So something can happen under? Precisely because there will be suspicion, normal, human activity, suspicion at this level is at its highest. All antennas are up, all the danger signals are up, and the agents are at their best here, ensuring, even using technology to ensure that nothing happens to these ballot boxes. And that is why they are being carried in the air. So your cameras are capturing them, the agents are capturing them, and all that. It is to go and sort out each of those ballots which belongs to what, and then start counting them thereafter. In the presence of the agent, two agents per, so there are 28 persons watching these ballots, these ballot boxes. And that is what is going on right now. And I think this is the most transparent thing that can ever happen. Who are the 28? The 28 are the two agents for each, each of the 14 aspirants. They are watching keenly to ensure that nothing happens to these ballots. So there's a special place they are headed for this sorting? Yes, they are going to the table, and I soon we are going to see them drop it with the 28 agents watching and the security agents protecting them. And then they are going to start sorting out each aspirant's own ballot and show to all the agents to come in that this ballot, the ones that are badly mutilated or not well spelled, for instance, you heard them announcing, there are three Ahmed on this ballot, so don't go and write Ahmed. You must put the Ahmed of Tinubu, the Ahmed of Lawan, and the Ahmed of Yer, uh, Yer, uh, Sani, you must indicate which of the Ahmeds you are talking about. There are two professors here, Professor Ben Ayade and Professor Yemo Shibaju. You must indicate the professor. Yemo. So the, the names were not on the ballot? No, no, no. The names were not on the ballot. No, are to, the are delegates are to names. write the names of the, of the person they want. Yes. 
Interesting. So there is no prop. There's no abbreviation. No. There's not just mm. a met. No. So <laughs> the Gabino, the, the margin of error will be minimal. Will be very minimal. That's why you heard them announce it in Hausa, in English, the major language in Wazobia, and proceeded in Pidgin English to make it clear because some of these people can write in Arabic, can write in English, but you must write this one in English. So they are told clearly if you cannot write, turn to the agent of the person you want to vote for to write it for you. It and when he writes it, you read it to oh, you. Okay, because I was going to say it presupposes that all of the delegates could read and write. Yes. I mean, it presupposes that they, but I mean, as you just said, there was help for those who couldn't, who couldn't. Uh, read and in write. In any case, don't forget that every delegate can vote and be voted for. Mm. So that means you, can, you may also have to write your own name. At least. At least you should. That is why you should school up to school level. That is the constitutional requirement for qualification. Not that you have to pass. You just don't need show to that pass. You just show that you attended and have a testimonial to show that you schooled up to school certificate. Now, you know how these things work sometimes. <laughs> People will have the certificates, uh, but sometimes the knowledge might be missing. <laughs> so, that is a different matter between potential mm. and actuals. Mm. Well, this is what we... Performance and pot potential are clear two different things. You are a PhD holder in English, and uh, pronunciation becomes a problem, writing becomes a problem for you, but you have a PhD and it's, there's proof mm. of it. Your school is here, yeah, you have a PhD, you are a professor. There will be big, big questions as to how you acquired the PhD. Uh, but let me ask you, now that we are um, approaching this counting and sorting, we've seen the ballots uh, being put somewhere. Uh, I think the pictures are still there. Yes, they're now being put on that table there. The agents are standing by, keeping vigilant watch over those boxes. Um, I'm wondering whether we're going to be seeing the names of each one of the person on that ballot being read out loud. Uh, that's of the PDP, all 767 or 700 and, yeah, 67 uh, ballots were read out loud for everyone to hear. So even at the, in the process of sorting, people were already doing their own calculations. They were already counting, so to speak. Um, you have over 2,000 delegates at this event. How possible, how realistic is it to expect that everyone will be able to follow that sorting process? That is why there are two agents. Both cannot go to sleep. The agents are the main actors here now at this point because their principals have a duty, gave them that duty, and anything that happens to them, one, uh, equity does not avail the indolent. That is a maximum, a legal maximum. Equity does not avail the indolent. So if you are indolent at this point and you sleep over your rights, that becomes entirely your business. But the duty of the election officer is to ensure that the process is as transparent and you are as present as possible. Where it is not clear to you, you insist on citing it. In any case, you must cite it. You cannot just say, Ahmed, Lawa, Ahmed, this, and then just put it. You must show the agents, all agents, this is for this person and it is placed by the side like that until all 14 are sort of all 14 are sort of if there is no yeah what i'm saying is uh, the viewers who are watching from home could also follow the counting process while it was on uh, at the velodrome yeah do you, do, do you expect to be able to do that here as well you are going to see it here even in INEC, if you follow all elections you pick a balance yeah yeah video. Everybody's excited. Jack Rich. Ben Ayade. Everybody must, all agents were excited. And as it is, it is from the paper and showing it to the agent. You must read it aloud and show that this is it. You cannot just say, it is not the agent to read it. It is the election officer to read the name there and show to confirm, for confirmation to the agent. The public in the position for that particular candidate. This is a really delicate time. Isn't very, it? very. That is but why we insist on vigilance on, on the part of the agents. So, in fact, I will tell you this mm -hmm. as an election organizer for parties. I was state chairman, so I have been agent several times. I've run elections myself and won. I've lost. Some. <laughs> but I tell you something. Most of the time, it is the agents that betray their principals. The agents have become a major problem in distorting elections and for election electoral fraud. How? They deliberately go to sleep or go to eat when counting is going on. <laughs> when they are induced. I have seen that happen to me several times. Agents compromise. And in budgeting, we discovered I have sat 
in opposition for 22 years now, since 2002. I've sat here organizing opposition in my state, so I understand what I'm talking about. You'll find a situation where in budgeting for elections, PDP will budget for agents of the opposition. We will budget money to induce the agents of the opposition. So you send your agent to the... Parties do that. I am naming parties and I'm telling you that I am a witness to that. I have gone to tribunal to challenge that and insist on that. And indeed, in one of the local government elections, a witness of PDP accused a lawyer cross-examining her of giving her 500 hours to go and eat so that they would change the ballot. Their own witness said that on the witness box. So that, go that, they do that deliberately? Ballot, it is budgeted for money for opposition agents. If, for example, you give your agent 5,000 or 1,000 and say, go and stay there. When you're hungry, give somebody to buy food for you, snack for you, or water for you. And you're giving him 1,000 as an opposition, you have no money. They, put, they budget 5,000 for him. So as they give him 5,000, they do the counting. And then he tells you that, sir, as I went to eat, before I came back, they dodged with the papers. He didn't go to eat anything. What's the average pay for agents? Huh? No, no, no. It depends on the elections and the capability of the, uh, the candidates. The candidate for election. But we do not expect to see that here, do we? No, here you cannot. Ah, this is the highest take of it. Even in presidential elections where you have an equality, that is a balance of power mm -hmm. in terms of finances, in terms of population, in terms of human strength, in terms of presence, where you have that balance of power, where you have that balance of financial muscle, there is no way you can. In any case, some agents are diehard agents. So this is largely up to the delegates. It's up to the Whatever delegates. Whatever they've done, up to this the is just agents. to finalize. Yes. So if the delegates and the agents are firm and resolute, there are people you cannot pay. Mm. I have such persons who you cannot pay. I know of persons who, even after the elections, and the winning candidate is not from his party, and he says, let's go and have a drink. He says he won't drink poison. Mm. He calls drink or food from the opponent in PDP and he called it poison. He I'm, wouldn't take. I'm just curious, um, after this is done, because I, I do know that uh, there's been plenty of talk around consensus. Uh, for some people, they said they did not see how a consensus was going to emerge amongst 23 aspirants. Uh, but there is a reason why political parties like consensus. It's because they think it builds the party and makes it stronger and it reduces bad blood, right? Uh, but this has not happened in this election. It, it, this uh, primaries now have been, whoever emerges here would have had to fight. The ticket would have been had won, let me put it that way. Um, how do you think that that aspirant uh, or that candidate, what work do you think he or she I don't think it'll be an issue because even the woman, the only woman stepped out. <laughs> what do you think that he will have to do to reconcile uh, all the other aspirants so that your party can progress as a united front? This is where APC is superlative, operates on the superlatives. And this is where this race is not for the lily livered. It's not for the knocked knees. It is for real men. Because in going into a contest, the suggestion of a contestation is that there must be a winner and there must be a loser. At all times, in going out for that kind of contest, you must have that in mind. Now, it pains if you are caught short or you feel that you have been short circuited or undermined. In this kind of contest, you can only accuse somebody of betraying you by not going the whole hub with you or of not working hard enough for you. But you cannot say you are not given opportunity to contest. In any case, our democracy cannot expand with the brand of consensus that we have in Nigeria today. I must say this beyond APC. I speak here for my country. I speak here for democracy. I have had to pay several times for democracy. Therefore, I will not compromise and I will not shy away from saying this. The brand of democracy we are practicing or consensus we are practicing now is what I call deodorized imposition including the one by your party the apc all parties all parties in nigeria whenever they tell you consensus today they just yoke you in break you down and insist that you must accept and push it down your throat and why, this being did not, why it didn't happen in this presidential election is because like i said there was a balance of power you cannot tell Yaya Bello to step down for anybody you cannot tell Itinobo to step down for anybody you cannot unless they willingly do so I cannot run any election and you ask me to step down.
No man living on this planet can ask me to do that. I must do that abolition out of discussion, out of conviction, out of dialogue, never out of coercion. I don't think that at my age and after what I have gone through for 22 years, no man living can ask me to step down by sheer force. If you take away that from me during the primaries, you won't take my vote away during yeah. the elections. I, I did ask you a question before, you know, we looked at the images about the sorting concerning delegates, acquired bomb states, Senator Akwano Doede and uh, Senator Gosula Pabio. So Senator Doede is going for governorship in the states on the platform of NAPP, and Akwabio uh, stepped down for, you know, a candidate here. So did he, in that scenario, Willed, what kind of powers, what kind of delegates' powers would he have wielded? Because Senator Dodeo -Dode too was a very high ranking member in the party, and so he's got some leverage. So, what kind of strength will delegates from Aquaman play or have here in the APC? You see, when you uh, say this, we're now dealing with the issue of theorization and speculation. Aquaman Dodeo, the guy, distinguished senator, former secretary of our party former governorship candidate of ACN in Akwaibom, high profile, he is no longer in the party. So to go discussing him would be to divert attention from what my party will do. But what made him leave in the first place should tell you that he took no chance anymore. And being the experienced politician that he is, he knew that he was going to be standing on, sand, on sandy grounds. He was not rock solid anymore. First, as a sitting secretary of party that organized the Congresses. He lost all structures, all state, local government chairman, ward chairman, state executive, to Senator Akwabio, Minister of Niger Delta. Now, this is an uncommon feat that the man who organized an event became a spectator. It's what stunned Senator Akwabio out of the party. It stunned him to his marrow because he couldn't understand what happened to him. It was not a party that took a decision. It was a court that saw through the processes and made a pronouncement, a declarative statement that the judgment was declarative and it was fundamental. You didn't purchase forms for this office, therefore you couldn't have been an officer of the party. And to that extent, he couldn't have had even a delegate because they also were going to organize the delegate's election would have been the state executive in conjunction with the national executive of the party. So for Akwa Nodega, it was the wise thing to do. Either you have to condone it, live with it, and with Senator Apabio as your leader, having the structures, and as a sitting senator being the highest ranking officer of the party in the state where there is no governorship candidate, you have to either live with that or take a walk. And he took the, the letter, which is to take a walk. So his staying back or going wouldn't have mattered because clearly, the uncommon governor, the uncommon minister would have remained uncommon and therefore un unapproachable and simply untouchable. Mm. He was sitting on top of his game. Are you, are you expecting to see many more defections after now? I mean, we would, because even though there's a lot of attention on what has transpired here in Eagle Square, uh, at the state level, what do you expect to see? I will tell you that where we are now, people are becoming ashamed because somehow there is what you call shamelessness and there's what you call shamefulness. A man who has become shameless has devoid himself of any form modicum of integrity and decency. He has dis 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 dispelled himself of any form of any human dignity and therefore anything and everything can go for him. A shameful act or a shameful person is a man who definitely knows that whatever action I take here will bring disgrace and dishonor, not just to my name, to my community and to my family. Therefore, he avoids it. That is dignity. So where we are now is such that men who have been habitual migrants, moving from party to party in search of power, are now becoming weary because the courts, both the court of public opinion and the judicial system has put a stop to it, and our laws and our status are beginning to catch up with such migrants. So that you must stay and build democracy. If all parties have to be dealing with migrants, 
there will be no democracy, there will be no foundation for democracy. So to sustain democracy, we need to see less of this movement. I expect a few of them who are still, not uncon who are still unconscionable to still move on, but they will be of no consequence and of no moment because they are like mercenaries. A mercenary is distrusted by those who hire them and those they go to attack and work against. So the first victim of a mercenary action is the mercenary himself. So if you continue to be a mercenary and a migrant, you know that you are a homeless person and you remain a refugee in your own country. So now that uh, you know, the delegate, the boxes have been aligned, uh, what usually happens? Why do you wait? While they are waiting, they are asking the delegates, I'm sure now, and the... Uh, delegates or agents? The agents, rather. They are asking, them because the delegates have nothing more to do here. They have finished their work. The delegates have nothing more to do here. They ought not to come near here. Only the 28 persons, two per, per, per aspirant, should be here now with security agents and the electoral officer. They are now working out the modalities. How shall we sort out? Is it state by state as we did the voting? Or is it box by box? Because is it by alphabetical, alphabetical order? Is it by a candidate aspirant order? They have to agree on that. That's what they are discussing now. Once they agree on that modality, it must be jointly agreed by the electoral officer from the party and the agent, the 28 agent. Shouldn't they have discussed that before? No. Before now? No. You do that, you are shortchanged. You can't be manipulated. Wow. So you don't do it before time. You don't. Nobody will accept that. In terms of how you sort the ballot? Yes. You don't do that. Wh if why? you tell me to sort that out, you can as well even say, I trust you. Go and sort it out and call us to come and do counting. No, That's no, no. I think the question is, uh, why do they have to wait up until now to, to decide the how yes. the modalities sort it will is happen. for transparency's sake. Yeah, but if you decide that among the agents before now, you will what not will be know. Transparent you will about not know what would have happened between the time of voting and the time of the sorting. It is only after this that you now know that the situation is coming up for us to go and do sorting. If the place is rowdy and you had agreed that you should go and do sorting in this place, and that place is rowdy, you have already agreed. Your guidelines have already said so. Could you? I hear them talk about each agent, two aspirants, or something like that. Is that supposed to play out? Each aspirant. Yes, yeah, so they're distributing the they're distributing the agent. Maybe they're not. They're going to be doing it simultaneously. For it to be faster, maybe they will say since there are two, two agents, a section one of the agents. Each of the one agent, 14, should be on this side, count, sorting and counting. This 14 should be this way, sorting and counting. I'm sure that's what they're announcing. This is, is the kind of thing you wouldn't have anticipated before the voting. So there are no fast and hard rules. Cost you more. Like Jesus will tell you, law is not made for man, not man for the law. You can come in here now and you say, we'll sort here, and the rain starts. What do you do? At? The former jury has occurred. You can't be sure change in our area. Can't yes. You? So you now say, hold on, we can't count anymore. But you have already said by 10 o'clock and by 10 o'clock it's raining and this place is no longer can no longer accommodate anybody there. What do you do? Stop until the rain stops. But you now say no because we say it is 10 o'clock. If it is 12, we can't count again. You want the election to stop? So you must have to make room for those exigencies. That is what you are seeing going out there. Does the president have to be present when they are about to announce or would they Our present? rules do not say so. It is only conventional that his successor, the processes leading up to the production of his successor, should be diligently followed by him to show that he cares about who succeeds him. If the process that produces his successor is flawed, he will produce a flawed successor. And we are all going to pay the price for it. In fact, I was going to talk about that when on the issue of the number of delegates that are doing this primaries. I'm uncomfortable with it. Our National Assembly has led us into a near quagmire in which 2,324 persons are going to decide for 41 million APC members who their president should be. Just 2,300 are going to decide for over 200 million Nigerians who their president should be. 700 did that for PDP. And 2,000 plus are doing less than 4,000 people out of over 200 million Nigerians. With over 100 million of them of voting age, we are putting less than 3,000 people to decide who their president will be. This is dangerous for us. That is why consensus, this is why delegated elections and this superdelegating has to stop. When Buhari became president, it was 
what do you call it? Uh, an indirect primary. It had delegates, but more delegates than this. For his second term of the first. For the first Both. term. No, for the first term. First term it was indirect. Primaries. Indirect. Second one was direct primary. Direct primaries. So it it gave room for more participation. So that as he came out, if that number of persons came out to say you are going to be our president, it means they will come out and vote for you on election day. So it gives you a wider field and shows wider acceptability and wider participation, and therefore people take responsibility for their irresponsibility of bringing out a bad or good president. To give 2,000 people out of 41 million APC members to choose her is dangerous. That was because the National Assembly targeted certain persons not to participate. And the process shot themselves in the food. Well, and this is something for which the press must bring out. The National they, Assembly wanted direct primaries. But you saw the battle, the uphill battle that yeah. they were up against, and the big debate that that generated. In fact, when it was sent to the president, the president asked that it be taken back, that they amend it to put uh, to reflect to give indirect options. and consensus. He wanted options in it. So, I mean, we you really blame the saying. National Assembly for that no, omission? No, what I'm, no, no, no. Look at the issue of excluding certain categories of persons on account of their, the nature of their job. Public servants, civil servants, appointees. Why do you punish a man for, be, for being appointed? Why can't he participate freely? You have given him 30 days, resign from your job and come and participate. In any case, you should be so liberal, so that you don't lose your best brains. A bureaucrat whom you know is a technocrat comes out to contest election, you start punishing him and say you can't return to your job. You'll be losing that kind of person because institutional memory is very important. Is this not a sort of failing on the part of your party? But in any case, because it's majority in the House, is your party, so they should have sorted it out. You, you, this is the, the party point I'm making. Here. I'm not talking about power party now. I'm talking about Nigeria. I'm talking about National Assembly. Your party once members you are elected, are Nigerians as well. Once you are elected, you cease to carry your party to God until there is a contestation for elections. But once it comes about public According policy... According to the textbook, but we see that certain no, things don't yeah, play out. Yeah, yet. yeah, because it doesn't play out. That's why we are, we are going the way we are going. All right. We must so, be able to get uh, away from now, that. Now, the sorting is uh, going on. The formalities uh, announcing the agents, the announcing who they represent. So we might as well just go ahead and listen in. So we're reaching you live, Sunrise Daily, coming to you live from the Eagle Square. Uh, and just what you are witnessing is the, the rules, how they're going to be invalidating or validating ballot papers. We've been told already, Chamberlain, mm -hmm. uh, that the names of the aspirants would have been written by each one of the delegates. And this is a little different from what we saw at the PDP. They had uh, printed ballot papers. So all that the uh, delegates had to do was some print on it. But this one, you have to write correctly the name of the candidate or the aspirant whom you're voting for. Uh, interesting process, uh, Chamberlain. Yeah. So what we, you, you hear and see is that intermittently they will call on certain persons and at the point in time there might be a law and so it will just keep going, you know, in a roller coaster manner. But you can see all of this party or officials. But Mr. Boom, all these election committee member, election committee co-chairman, election committee, uh, this is done pro bono, I imagine, is it? Are they paid? The, all, these, all these officials. The, the, the officials. Are there allowances are in, for them or is this pro bono? Yeah. yeah. They're paid? They don't. Oh. They don't. I will tell you something. You were saying something to the effect that uh, the PP just typed out names. If that happened in this case, Yes. And five or seven persons stepped down. Their yes. names will be on that ballot. Indeed. And, and for those people who are going to vote now, yes. they would have been having five or seven people. And it's for people who are struggling to even read, you now inundate them with 23 names for them to start looking for which one is what. So it's easier for them to put it down and say, this is the person I want to write it for me. So the number of aspirants also did you in uh, uh, with that method. Because what the PDP said, was that on their own ballot, if you thumbprint for somebody who has stepped down or for somebody who is, says is no longer in the race, that vote was counted as invalid. Of course. If you are voting for nobody. Exactly. So they don't need to even say so. So they, they said that. They made that rule very clear. So you, there is no need to even... That is what INEC is suffering. You have mushroom parties that put themselves on the ballot 
and you have 91 names according to alphabetical order and you start searching for pdp you start searching for apc start, and all that whereas if from the beginning we say if you don't present a candidate for this election your name shouldn't be on that ballot several of them can't even present candidates for for state house of assembly yet their names are on the ballot so you start searching and wasting the time and wasting money to print that kind of long paper and all that so this is the innovation it is to prevent that that we are going to get this strict thing of rights the name. So do you plan contesting anything in the future for the part in your party? I'm already on my way to contest the federal house seat, which I believe upon appeal that our, uh, our party will give to me. I am contesting for federal. I'm supposed to run for the Senate, but uh, I believe in equity as it was. But somehow I want to go to the National Assembly. It means I'll be going you... to the National Assembly. I'll be going to the National Assembly. And you're going to reown your delegates not just me if anybody tells you that nobody owns delegates he is talking the american theory he's not talking nigerian politics nigerian policy is a distinct entity of its own it has a spirit of its own wait 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 so what happens if one wants to contest but doesn't want to come to any of these parties because it feels look this political party this big political parties won't give me you know the structure or the platform or the kind of things i need and i want to go it alone because i have support of the people so i'll join one of these parties and go to give it a shot fantastic i had contemplated in fact my supporters had asked me not to waste money going to buy forms for 10 20 million whether that money can get into the, the, the central district and win. Upon my name, my name will win elections for my party. My name will win elections for my party in my area. But what structure would you use if you don't use this other what, parties? What is structure? Is it pieces of wood? It's humans. It's humans. And you, ha you, are, you gel with the people. You are on the ground with the people. You are in their weddings. You are in their burials. You are in their road construction works. You are on their scholarships. You are assisting and giving all kinds of assistance. And when it comes to elections, they are standing with you. I go to elections. I've contested elections and won without printing a poster. I, I have contested elections. In fact, the last time I was to contest, my community, my community, the youth of my community, contributed 1.5 million. I wept when they sent that money to my account. They said I should send my account. Just because you attended weddings, burials? Not just because they feel that I cry with them and laugh with them. Wow. Whenever they are crying, I am crying with them. I live in a border community with the Cameroons, stretching over five, four or five local governments. I have carried out studies for the past 17 years on that, and I've faced the United Nations, I've faced the National Assembly I've, on account of invasions of that. So when you are with the community, the community is always with you at all times. And I say this without being immodest, that it is not difficult, it is impossible for you to win councillorship on my place, even if I'm dead and buried today. And you bring my coffin and place there and say, somebody says, I dreamt that this man told me in my dream that this is the next councillor you win. Your name will still be on the ballot? Yes. Wow. I'm not saying my name will be, I say my uh, name will win that election. In the manner of speaking? Yes. Mr. Boom, thank you very much indeed for your perspective today.